We're at the port of Echuca, right on the Murray River. We're going to go on one of the paddle steamers. That's the PS Canberra, the paddle steamer we're going on. the flood levels 1870 on the top 1975 next one down and 1974 the one after that and there's the river down there Corellas up there in the gum trees. seats or sitting up on the handrails, you must remain within all the doors, chains and enclosures on the boat. And if you're accompanied by small children, make sure you know where they are at all times as they tend not to float very well. <laughs> now starting on our right here, you can see the Pride of the Murray. She was built to the Chuka in 1924 as an outrigger logging barge, converted over to a paddle boat with the addition of the promenade decks, the paddle wheels and the diesel motor. She does our cruises, charters and weddings sorts of things around town. Then uh, we have the Alexander Arbuthnot there, a nice 
fresh coat of paint on her there. She was built at Kundrook in 1923. Launched in May of that year, she was the last steamer built for cargo work on the river. There have been lots of boats that have been built since. They've been tourism and private uh, purposes. During the Second World War, she was the last privately owned cargo boat operating out of Echuca here. In front of that, with the rounded paddle boxes, is the Adelaide. She was launched at Echuca on the 21st of July, 1866. She's about the fifth oldest paddle steamer in the world today, the oldest one that we have on this river here. Spent the bulk of her working life here at Echuca with the Murray River Sawmill just above the bridge. Now her retirement was spent up in the Hobbit Garden of the Bridge Hotel. If you ever visit Echuca, you might remember it sitting up there. In 1984 she was refloated into the river here. The following year she was recommissioned by Prince Charles and Lady Di during their royal tour. A little bit further along there with the uh, Australian flag up on the bow there you'll see the Henry Charles. Launched the Chuka here in 1999. She's what you would term a modern era paddle boat. Built on a steel hull with a boiler and steam engine to drive the paddle wheels. These sort of boats are usually owned by people who want something a little bit more interesting than a floating shed with an outboard motor on the back. She built as a fishing boat, she had a bit of a varied career. Eventually she arrived here at Echuca in 1991, restored by a local family here. In front of that with the blue trim and the cross on top of the wheelhouse roof you can see the Atona. The Atona was built at Malang in South Australia in 1898 for the Church of England. I used to travel up and down the bottom end of the Murray trying to convert some of those heathenous South Australians into Christianity. They gave up in 1912 and she was sold to Arch Connor. He uh, removed the wheelhouse and used her as a fishing boat. She arrived here to Chuka in 1962. She was one of the first boats on the river to go into active preservation. The name of Tona has arrived at Eton College. They sponsored her construction. Straight up in front of us here you can see another little collection of boats there. These are all modern era boats built on steel hulls and uh, most of them have a little diesel motor in them to drive the paddle wheels. We're going to head off upstream for a little way now as we cruise along and have a wander around the boat. If you've got any questions at any time feel free to come and ask if we haven't got an answer for you or we'll make up something that sounds good. The girls have got the key, I'll scope them on the lower deck if you fancy a cup of tea or a coffee, a cool drink, a beer, a glass of wine, or a souvenir if you cruise on the Canberra.
two-seater paddle steamer Hero. She was built at Echuca in 1874. She had a long and productive working life that came to an abrupt halt at Boundary Bend in the late 1950s when she burned and sank. Salvaged in 1998, she uh, underwent quite an extensive, expensive restoration job to get her to the stage you see there today. Through ahead of us here you can see the Iron Bridge spanning the river. Echuca and Moama were the first two towns on the Murray to be linked with a permanent structure. It was designed by William Henry Green, who was the resident engineer for the Victorian Railways. Completed in December 1878, it was funded by the two colonial governments of New South Wales and Victoria. When it was uh, completed, that posed a bit of a problem. Who was going to open it? someone from Victoria or someone from New South Wales. They sat down together and came up with a solution. That was to put gates on each end, padlock them shut, nobody could use it. It stayed that way until February the following year, and then the Echuca Bridge Riot took place. Local townsfolk from each side stormed the bridge, smashed the padlocks, swung the gates, and declared the bridge open for themselves. To the present day, it's never been opened by any government department. In 1989, the concrete rail bridge was added on the other side there. That takes the heavy rail traffic off the old iron bridge. flood level. The river peaked at a height of a touch over 33 feet. It was the biggest flood recorded on the river here since the early 1970s. We measure a height in the river because there is no consistent depth. The water along the river is places you can walk across it at certain times of the year without getting your uh, knees wet. Other places where it's known to be 80 and 90 feet deep. Now paddle steamers like the Canberra here, they were favoured for use on this river. They could float in very little water. The Canberra were flying just under two feet of water to float in. The paddle wheels are also harder to damage. And they did get damaged, it was only a matter of bashing them back into the right shape and you could continue on with your journey. Heading downstream here, you can see Emmy Lou. She was built at Barham in 1980. Purpose built for overnight accommodated cruises, two day, two night trips. During uh, filming all the rivers around here to Chuka in 1982, she started as a Providence.
journey back down to Echuca. If we to continue heading upstream, you can travel to Yarrawonga, 180 mile upstream. It's a head of navigation today. The weir was completed up there in 1939 without a lock chamber. Beyond that is Albury, 300 mile from Echuca, and that's as far as the early steamers used to travel. Beyond that is the pilot up in the Snowy Mountains, and Murray has its origins. Downstream in the direction we're about to start travelling, it is still possible to travel all the way down to the sea. A journey of 1,066 miles through 13 different lock chambers, out through the barrages of Gulwa and into the Southern Ocean. The level of water that you see in the river here today, it is totally artificially maintained by two dams and 14 weirs. Upstream we have the Hume Dam on the Murray River, the Darvis Dam on the Mitter Mitter, they release water to a series of 14 weirs which slow the descent of the water on its way down to the sea. The infrastructure on the Murray system here was built between 1915 and 1979. 
was originally a grand plan for 26 locks and weirs on this river. Most of it was abandoned during the 1930s. Now prior to the introduction of dams and weirs to the Murray, even through the most severe drought, it's always been able to maintain some sort of a flow. Before 1923, the river here used to physically dry out on a regular basis. You drive across it, walk across it. On the lower deck here, there's even a photograph of a picnic that was being held in the bottom of the river in 1914. The name Murray comes from Sir George Murray. He was the colonial secretary in 1830 when Sturt discovered the river. He happened to find the same river that Hume and Hobble had found in 1824. That actually named it the Hume River in honour of Hamilton Hume's father. The Murray system here drains a seventh of the country. The network of streams and rivers that attach to it stretch up past the Queensland border, takes in the Victorian tributaries this side of the Great Dividing Range. They even redirect most of the Snowy River under the mountains and back into this river system as well. On the way down here, if you've got any kids on board that want to come and have a quick hang out of the wheel, get your photo taken, you're welcome to come and do so. You do have to be qualified for this, and the qualification is that you don't have sticky fingers. I'll chop them off and put them on my necklace. Now, the Murray Dam is Working as a uh, as a uh, functioning port, it was another five times the length that you see it here today. It catered to nearly 200 boats and barges plying their trade. Built at a height above the river, there it uh, towers above the river on a day like today, about 38 feet. But, uh, it's actually built that high because the river can get that high. During the Great Flood of 1870, it actually left the underside of the wharf and put three foot of water into the main street of town. The busiest time in Echuca here was during the 1870s and into the 1880s. Crippling droughts and a bank crash from 1890 onwards uh, caused the demise of the paddle steamer trade on the river. The gradually Echuca and the wharf here fell into disrepair. At the height of its busiest time, Echuca was known to have an itinerant population of about 3,000 people. They had 87 hotels, 6 houses of ill refugee, 2 churches, so I guess you'd say they had their priorities right. The name Echuca comes from the Aboriginal dialect here, and uh, it means the meeting of the water, being located between the junction of the Goulburn and Campaspe rivers. 
As it's pulled into the wharf there you can see the Pevensey, she was built in 1911, she was a cargo steamer. On board she was capable of carrying 850 bales of wool, she was also tow a barge with 1,000 bales. The modern equivalent to that is a little bit over 20 semi-trailer loads. In 1983 she started as Philadelphia and all the rivers run. The name Pevensey is derived from a sheep station on the Murrumbidgee River, which was a regular visitor in a working way. Thank <laughs> you. 